हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ कॉमर्स वेलकम टू कंडा सर वर्चुअल क्लास ऑन मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए न्यू चैप्टर फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रेट चैप्टर इलेवन एंड आफ्टर दिस चैप्टर ओनली वन लास्ट चैप्टर दैट इज रिमेनिंग सो हार्डली वी विल नीड फोर टू फाइव वीडियोज टू कम्प्लीट द सिलेबस फॉर दिस इयर सो बिफोर गोइंग अड we need to understand what is the meaning of foreign exchange and what is the meaning of foreign exchange rate first what is foreign exchange we know that different countries currencies are different for example in india we have rupees in usa it is the dollar in uk it is pound sterling so name of currencies in different countries are different but only not a name the value of different currencies are also different so first come to only what is foreign exchange foreign exchange is the total stock of foreign currencies and financial documents like securities and bonds issued by different foreign agencies like foreign government or foreign corporate house the government of india purchases bonds and securities issued by foreign government as well as foreign corporate houses so all those things combinedly makes are called foreign exchange stock of a country so the total amount of foreign exchange and the total amount of total number of bills and securities and bonds at the hand of government of india is called the stock of foreign exchange so now what is foreign exchange rate foreign exchange rate is the exchange rate between different currencies let me explain it with the help of an example uh, suppose <coughs> we need to pay 50 rupees to get 1 dollar us dollar so we can say the value of us dollar in terms of indian rupees is 50 that is 1 is to 50 means 50 rupees equal to 1 dollar or 1 rupees equal to 1 upon 50 dollar the value of 1 rupee in terms of dollar is that of the 50th part of a dollar so that is foreign exchange rate now <clears throat> as we know uh, after this much discussion now we are able to understand the meaning of foreign exchange and the meaning of foreign exchange rate now it is time to discuss how exactly the foreign exchange rate is determined what is the mechanism of determination of foreign exchange rate and as you can see in the blackboard there are three different ways with the time with the time period <coughs> the system has evolved and how in the ancient time means uh, before uh, uh, one or two centuries how the exchange rate uh, between different countries were determined and how with the passage of time it evolved so coming to the first time it is fixed exchange rate system so <coughs> we now we will discuss and try to understand the meaning of fixed exchange rate system as it has two section under this fixed exchange rate system we have two different system like gold standard exchange system and the britain wood system and the year is also mentioned here in between 1870 to 1914 the gold standard exchange rate system was prevailing was very popular but as some complicacy uh, uh, occurred actually a new system was evolved that is the britain wood system and the reason might be the volume the 
साइज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ट्रेड और इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड और इट माइट बी द पॉलिटिकल फैक्टर लाइक डोमिनेशन ऑफ ए कंट्री विल डिस्कस दैट इन द रिलीवेंट एरिया सो फर्स्ट कॉम डू बोथ आर फिक्स एक्सचेंज रेट सिस्टम गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड एंड द ग्रेटर लूट सिस्टम फर्स्ट वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वट इज गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड एक्सचेंज रेट सिस्टम अंडर गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड एक्सचेंज रेट सिस्टम एक्चुअली द वैल्यू ऑफ ए करेंसी ऑफ ए कंट्री इज डिटरमाइंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ द वैल्यू ऑफ गोल्ड एंड आफ्टर दैट द रियल एक्सचेंज रेट बिटवीन करेंसीज आर फिक्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल सपोज वन डॉलर वन यूएस डॉलर विथ वन यूएस डॉलर वी कैन परचेज टेन ग्राम्स ऑफ गोल्ड and with वन rupees suppose we can purchase only वन gram of gold so naturally the exchange rate between US dollar and Indian rupees is वन is to टेन that is we have to pay टेन rupees to purchase वन dollar thus the exchange rate is determined in terms of the value of gold and why gold because gold is a rare gold is a precious metal and hardly over time the value of gold fluctuates it remains almost stable that's why gold was chosen to standardize the exchange rate system now come to britain wood system this is rather than economic a political affairs and you can understand in between 1945 to 1971 actually in the world <coughs> the usa was playing a, a very dominant role and naturally the currency of usa the us dollar also was dominant all over the world and according to this system actually all the currencies different currencies of different countries were actually uh, related to us dollar and ultimately it can be converted into gold so indirectly via or through us dollar currency of any country can be converted into gold and in both the system the government had to uh, uh, keep 100% gold reserve that was the real difficulty to maintain now coming to the merits and demerits of fixed exchange rate system we will be able to understand more clearly about what were the problems and what were the benefits of fixed exchange rate system now coming to the merits first one is ensure stability you see when the exchange rate is fixed extra stable between two governments for a definite period of time then no forces in the world can alter the exchange rate for that period of time that means the exchange rate has extreme stability so this quality of exchange rate being perfectly stable has some merits as well as some demerits let us see so what were the merits because the exchange rate was stable that's why coordination between different macro policies became convenient once again let me explain the oh, uh, meaning of coordination between different macro policies we have different macro policies related to agricultural sector related to industrial sector related to tertiary sector related to, to the power and energy sector and uh, a while making policies and implementing them we have to transact we have to make transaction with other countries and here arises the need of or importance of foreign exchange rate so once there is stability in foreign exchange rate then naturally there is no disturbance in establishing perfect coordination among different macro level policies that was one of the uh, uh, another merits of fixed exchange rate system now come to the third one it prevents speculation what is speculation <coughs> let me say suppose now it is the prices of potato is rising every week this week uh, uh, before five week it was uh, um, actually uh, 10 rupees per kilo and after 7 uh, days it became 20 rupees per kilo after again 7 days it became 30 rupees per kilo so here what the owner or the producer of potato would think he would start speculation speculation means seeing a picture that is not yet occurred 
So he would think if the trend goes on like this, if the system goes on in this way, then obviously after five or ten weeks it would reach hundred rupees, and after that he would start hoarding, would not put to uh, sell his product, and there would be shortage in the market, supply would be reduced. So all these are dirty games generated from speculation. The same way when uh, a exchange rate system becomes fixed and stable, what happens? People cannot speculate because they understand clearly that what is the foreign exchange rate right now, the same would be prevailing after one year or so. Hence, there is no speculation, no dirty game. That is yet another merit of uh, <laughs> fixed exchange rate system. Now come to some of the demerits of fixed exchange rate system. First one, doesn't encourage venture capital. You need to understand the meaning of venture capital when an investor invests his capital in some unknown area or unknown field. That type of investment is called that type of capital is called venture capital. Usually, what comes in the shape of foreign direct investment (FDI) and what happens when exchange foreign exchange rate is fixed, then venture capital because people because foreign investors cannot speculate, that's why they would be discouraged to uh, uh, invest in newer areas. That's why fixed exchange rate system discourages venture capital, which is one of its demerit. The second one is possibility of under and over valuation. See, suppose the exchange rate is fixed that one dollar equal to 50 rupees and it is going to be stable for one year. So what happens? It might be possible that in between the year there would be change <coughs> in the demand and supply of foreign exchange and in that way there might be over valuation or under valuation of currencies. That's why uh, the fixed uh, foreign exchange rate system is defective because there is highly possible high possibility that there might be under or over valuation of different currencies. And third one is the worst one is the government has in this system the government has to put hundred percent gold reserve. Remember, gold is a very precious and valuable and costly matter. It is also rare. Means we don't have enough or plenty of a supply of gold with us. So now you see, if in order to uh, ensure uh, stability, we have to keep hundred percent. That means if the volume of international uh, uh, trade is one trillion rupees, then we have to uh, keep or hold one trillion rupees of gold, and it is a rare metal. It is never possible with the expansion of economy, our the volume of our economies are growing and at the same rate the supply of gold is not increasing. That's why we can never keep 100% gold reserve. That's why due to these demerits actually peoples or economists started thinking and yet another exchange rate system was evolved which is called flexible exchange rate system. So, what is flexible exchange rate system? Actually, in this exchange rate system, government never interferes or never determines the exchange rate. In fact, the actual exchange rate is determined by the market forces of demand for foreign exchange and supply of foreign exchange. If in the year, time to time, because the demand and supply for a foreign exchange is never static, it goes on changing. That's why obviously throughout the year the <coughs> exchange rate would fluctuate. Sometimes it would be more, sometimes it would be less. For example, suppose the demand for US dollar increased, obviously the exchange rate between rupees and dollar would rise. And the just opposite would happen when the demand for foreign exchange would fall, the exchange rate would be decreasing. <coughs> so this is how in, in flexible exchange rate system <coughs> there are some merits as well as demerits and the uh, most important merit is uh, that 
इट इज डिटरमाइन बाय मार्केट फोर्सेस एंड मार्केट फोर्सेस आर ऑलवेज ट्रू दे शो दे डेमोन्स्ट्रेट द एक्चुअल पिक्चर ऑफ द इकोनॉमी सो नाउ कम टू द सम ऑफ द मेरिट्स ऑफ फ्लेक्सिबल एक्सचेंज रेट सिस्टम फर्स्ट वन बीइंग प्रॉब्लम ऑफ ओवर और अंडर वैल्यूएशन इज सॉल्व्ड यस एज गवर्नमेंट हैज नो इंटरफेरेंस देयर इज नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ अंडर वैल्यूएशन ऑफ करेंसी और ओवर वैल्यूएशन ऑफ करेंसी बिकॉज़ With the passage of time, according to demand and supply only, the exchange rate would be determined. So it may be determined hundreds of times. It may change hundreds of times during one economic year. The second one being the most important one here in this system, hundred percent gold reserve is not required. A great relief for the planners, for the economists, <coughs> because gold is rare. We can never. <laughs> keep a hundred percent gold reserve uh, equivalent to our uh, volume of foreign trade. Then the third point we encourage venture capital because uh, exchange rate is subject to change. Then obviously foreign investors uh, they would start speculation. And if the speculation says that the foreign exchange rate is going to increase, then obviously their investment would rise. Thus, venture capital. comes into an economy when it adopts flexible exchange rate system and some of the demerits are no stability like or like fixed exchange rate rate system where there are always stability in exchange rate it is subject to fluctuation subject to change in flexible exchange rate rate system there is no stability in foreign exchange rate it goes and goes and changing every time there is a change in demand and supply next we can become in discouraging international trade because coordination between uh, the macro policies become a uh, tougher or dip more difficult that's why it discourage international trade because exchange rate system it cannot be predictable it goes on changing here so the third one is managed floating system so after these two exchange rate system the a uh, most uh, uh, suitable Uh, exchange rate system evolved was managed floating exchange rate system, and according to this system, two important thing happens. The exchange rate is determined by the market forces of demand and supply, but the central bank of the country always regulates whenever there is an appreciation or a depreciation of domestic currency. now what is appreciation and depreciation of domestic currency suppose 1 <coughs> dollar equal to 50 rupees and it changed into 1 dollar equal to 60 rupees that means now we have to pay more rupees to get 1 dollar so this is a case of depreciation of our domestic currency rupees on the other hand if 1 dollar equal to 50 rupees changed and became 1 dollar equal to 40 rupees then this is an increase in the value of our domestic currency which is called appreciation of domestic currency and both are not desirable that's why here the apex authority of apex monetary authority of our country the central bank of india or the reserve bank of india always keep a vigil on the exchange rate system and whenever there is an appreciation or depreciation it uses it implements it uh, uses its different fiscal and monetary tools and try to control it so in the next classes we will discuss how central bank controls the appreciation and depreciation of foreign currency this is all about times of foreign exchange rate system we will continue to more videos to complete this chapter and for today thank you and have a nice day